We're going to jump right into it today. All right. How you guys doing? Great. My name is Samuel Laws. I have the honor of serving as our lead pastor. And I just want to welcome everyone joining us from Dublin, San Ramon, San Francisco, online. I'm really excited today. You guys ever just get wake up excited? Because I didn't wake up excited last Sunday because, you know, I lost an hour. But I'm excited today. And I'm excited because there's so many great things that God is doing around here at Brave. And so one of them coming up is... Uh, Easter fest, right? You guys spreading the word? Are you guys helping us spread the word? Okay, Jesus invited everybody, so we can invite somebody, right? And I'm just, we're just gonna do something real quick. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a part of this church, you should be inviting people to Easter. I mean, this is a, a really easy Sunday. Not everybody finds inviting people to church easy. I mean, you know, it can be kind of awkward because you're just, you don't know where they stand. You don't know if they're open. But the thing about Easter fest is, there's all kinds of stuff for the family. It's more than just a service. It's an event. It's a party. It's a celebration. So if you're a follower of Jesus, if this is your home church, everybody can invite somebody. Text the link. Just, just text brave.church slash Easter. You can do it now. You can do it later today. You can say that Pastor Samuel made you, okay? Or you can say Pastor Samuel wanted me to invite you. I don't care what you say. How, whatever makes it easy for you, to think about others, amen? And then also in San Francisco, we are so pumped. I don't know, quick show of hands if you saw the church update this week of the construction, the renovations. Okay, there's so much going on. In fact, if you ever wanna know more about what's going on behind the scenes, make sure that you follow our YouTube channel because every few weeks we're dropping an update with stuff that's happening behind the scenes that we don't have all the time to talk about on Sundays, but we showed some footage and there's renovations happening and Brave Kids is going to be launching on Easter in San Francisco. And we just, we're really excited for what God's going to do through Brave Church SF, but we're also really excited to be a church in the city of St. Francis that really cares about children. You know, children can so easily be overlooked in cities, or you might not even think there's a lot of children there, but we're going to be there for those kids. Amen? So we're pumped. All their kids' spaces are getting renovated. It's going to be really cool. Um, hey, <clears throat> excuse me. We are wrapping up our Gospel of John series the week after Easter. Okay, when you came in, there should be notes. If you didn't get notes, you can raise your hand. Or if you need a pen, raise your hand. Our ushers will get those to you. Um, but we've been in the Gospel of John. And, you know, on Easter, he is risen. We're going to be celebrating, but we're not going to finish the series until the week after Easter. Because what's next? Okay, he is risen, but what's next? And so you're not going to want to take the week after Easter off. A lot of people, if you attend church like a few times a month or once a month or... You know, maybe once a year. Hey, don't take the week after Easter off, okay? You, let's get a streak going. But it's going to be a really important time to conclude our series. We've been in it since the first week in January. And God has been teaching us so much through this gospel. Have you guys been learning a lot about Jesus? Every week. Yeah, every week we've been asking the question, who is Jesus? And so this week we're in John 14. And let's just begin with our passage, the first seven verses here says this, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. So Jesus is talking to his disciples and he's about to leave them. He's going somewhere. He says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. So Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Um, when I first started driving, I was 16. Do you guys remember when you first started driving? Maybe you just started driving yourself? Okay, so I remember the first time I got on the freeway, I was scared. Do you guys remember what that felt like? I mean, it felt like you could die. And my little brother was in the car too, so his life was in my hands. 
And we were like, it was the first time we were driving somewhere where it was like, we're going to drive somewhere far away, which was the next town over to get to my Nana and Papa's house. And I've been going to their house my whole life. But you know those kids who like, it's like they're looking out the window. They're seeing, you know, this is here, this is here. They've got landmarks. Like maybe they don't know street signs, but they can just get places. That was not me. <laughs> okay, I got lost like right away. I'm on the freeway. I missed my exit and it put me onto a different freeway. And so I was getting nervous and I just exited. But I was so nervous. You know when you're nervous, you just make other mistakes. So then I ran a red light. And then I realized I was almost out of gas. And I'm like, this is going terrible. And this is before phones had maps on them. So I, I just like stopped and regrouped. And fortunately, my little brother knew the way back home. Have you ever gotten lost? Have you ever gotten lost in life? Because we don't just get lost driving, we get lost in life. Have you ever felt lost in a relationship? Have you ever felt lost like you were without a sense of community? Have you ever felt lost in your career? Have you ever felt lost in your family? Have you ever just felt lost? Have you ever felt far from home or like you didn't know how to get back home. Um, the thing about being lost is that it's not a feeling that God ever intended for us to feel. We were never meant to experience being lost. In the beginning, God created humans. He put us in a garden. There he provided for us. We, we had everything we needed to live. We had purpose. We were totally set up to thrive. We would never get lost our entire lives. But when sin entered this world, it infected everything. When you're born, think about this. You don't know where you are. Everything's dark. All of a sudden, it's super bright. People are looking at you. We aren't born knowing where we are. We aren't born knowing God. We aren't born knowing our purpose. There's so many things that we're disoriented to that we have to figure out in life. We are born spiritually lost, needing to find God. And so here's the good news. Jesus says the son of man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus came to find you and he came to help you find God. We were never meant to lose our way in life, but when we do, what it does is it points us to our need for more. C.S. Lewis, he said this. He said, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. And so some of you, you feel lost and maybe you don't know why. Others of you, maybe, maybe God is trying to show you something right now in this season of life about your life or about what he has for you. Maybe he's trying to lead you to something or maybe he's just trying to lead you to a relationship with him. Maybe you've been searching and, and you are at a point of feeling a little lost and you're like, okay, well maybe, maybe I can find something here and we love that you're here. But you know what's so interesting about this passage is Jesus, he doesn't show us that the solution to being lost is to be found. Now there's other places where he uses this metaphor of being found, but here it's not about being lost to found. When, when you're lost, being found is great. But you know what is even better than being found? being home. Jesus shows us that a relationship with him is how we find our way home. The home that our hearts are longing for. The peace that we just can't seem to get a hold of, that we're searching for. It's, it's so much more than just knowing where you are. He's trying to take us somewhere. And so today what we're going to learn from this passage is how to find your way home. Let's take a look again at these first few verses. It says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, but believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms, and if that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Um, the first thing about finding your way home is you need a vision of what home looks like. What, what kind of home am I trying to find? What does it feel like to be home? Where am I, what am I searching for? If you want this kind of home that Jesus is talking about, it, it might seem counterintuitive, but the first thing that we need to know is this. Number one in your notes, 
Get directions to a person, not a place. Get directions to a person, not a place. The biggest misconception of this passage is that God's house, my father's house, is just this big mansion in heaven, right? That we're just, that it's like this place we go when we die, and when we move on. Another misconception would be that he's just talking about his church. He's not talking about being here. Okay, that's not the house we're talking about. It's a, it's a house that is a relationship with God, a relationship with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's, it's not some far off place or some transition point. It's all about knowing Jesus. So according to Jesus, if, if you wanna get home, you've gotta run the bases with him. There's no other way to get there. And so the question that we have to ask ourselves is if, if God is our father and he's inviting us to live in his home, then do I really believe, do I really think it's possible to have a relationship with my creator as a father, as a, as a son and a father, as a daughter and a father. See, no matter how lost we feel, there is a home that is available to us that God is inviting us into. It's a beautiful home. It's on a hill. It has a view. It has plenty of room. It never runs out of room. But the reality is if, if we've been given the keys to this home, we still have a choice to make. Am I going to pop in sometimes when I feel like going for a visit, right? Am I gonna, am I gonna be a visitor? Am I gonna move in? Am I gonna move in and move out? Or is this going to be my new home? We're gonna talk more about what this looks like in a little bit. But one thing about this home is there's room for everyone, okay? It's the opposite of when Jesus was born. When Jesus was born, there was no room for him in the inn. There was no room for his mother to give birth. But in God's home, there's room for everyone. It's also easy to miss something else here that's really important. Uh, these are Jesus' parting words to his disciples. He says, I'm about to go away. I'm about to leave you. This, he was about to go to the cross where they couldn't go with him. Jesus has, has just told them that, that he's gonna leave them. And so the reason he says, don't be troubled, don't let your hearts be troubled, is because he knows that in his absence, you know, they've been traveling with him. They've been walking with him. They've been living life with him. He was, their, he was their, their, their Lord, their rabbi. He knows that the moment he's gone, even if it's momentarily, they're gonna be troubled. They're gonna be anxious. They, they were like children about to lose their parents. They were like students about to lose their teacher. And so they needed to be reassured that even when he was gone, their home was secure, that they'd be able to find their way back home, but they'd have to trust him. Have you ever felt lost in the present because you felt uncertain about your future? Or maybe something was promised to you and it, now it looks like it's gonna fall through or maybe some things that you thought were gonna happen, just you thought they'd have happened by now and they still haven't happened. You're like, what's going on? I, I thought I'd be at this point. I thought I'd be married. I thought I'd be set in my career. I thought I'd have this or that. There's all kinds of these, these things that can make us feel like what is going on. And so when Jesus went to the cross, his disciples were like, this is not what we thought was gonna happen, right? This was not our plan. And so they scattered and they felt like they lost their home. Fortunately, we're not in this same situation as the disciples were in this moment because Jesus has risen and he has sent his spirit to be with us. Let's continue, verses four and five. It says, you know that the way, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know to get there? Number two, get comfortable in your real home. Get comfortable in your real home. In verse four, Jesus says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. He says, you know the way. In point one, we talked about it being to a person, not a place. So now that we're, we're talking about the way there, we're, we know that we're talking about the way to a relationship. We're talking about the way to a person. So what's the way of Jesus? The first thing I think of is the Mandalorian, right? This is the way. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a Star Wars show, Disney Plus. Yeah, go check it out for one. Uh, but it, it, you know, in the, the show, Mandalorians are a group of people and they're these super cool warriors. They have this code that they live by. They do weird stuff like wear these helmets all the time and they can't take them off. I don't know why. 
thought about Googling it, and then I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to be surprised, you know? <laughs> or maybe I missed that episode. But they're, they're, they're walking around, and if you, they take their helmet off, or if they break the way, if they do something outside of the way they're supposed to live, or the way they're, the, the code that they're supposed to follow, they lose their Mandalorian card. Have you ever joined a club that had a culture or a way of doing things? And maybe you know what it's like to feel like if I don't if I don't follow this, maybe, I, maybe I'm, outside, I'm on the outside. I'm kind of like, I, it's, it's awkward. Or, or maybe you've been the new person in a group. And the thing about being new is you're very aware that there's things you need to figure out. You're very aware when, when you stand out and you're trying to fit in. It's like you're trying to crack a code. And so when Jesus, when he talks about the way, Thomas is like, where are you going? Like, we don't know how to get there. But, but then he says, Lord... Uh, he says, where are you going? And he still thinks he's talking about a place, but Jesus is talking about a way, a pathway, a way of being, a way of doing things. Uh, the word used for way is hados. This is a traveled way, a road, a journey, a, a metaphor used for course of conduct. And so Jesus, he also uses this word in other places when he describes um, the, the wide gate, the gate is wide. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow the way that leads to life. And only a few find it. Um, so there's also another example where, there's, where Jesus, there's these guys walking on a road. It's called the road to Emmaus. And Jesus, they encounter Jesus. They didn't know at first who he was. And then he starts explaining the scriptures to them. And what's fascinating is they, they said, after this conversation, they said, we're not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the hados and opened the scriptures to us. Like they had this moment where they realized, wow, Jesus wasn't just walking with us on a path, but he was opening up our eyes to seeing this whole way of, of relating to God. See, sometimes when you start to understand, when you start to follow the way of Jesus, it feels like that. There's a burning from within. There's a passion, there's a quickening, there's, there's clarity. It's how we get to know God, but it's also a way of being that we're meant to live into and to learn about. So to know the way is to actively get to know Jesus, to get comfortable in your real home. When you wanna get to know someone, what do you do? You talk to them, that's prayer. You uh, spend time together, that's fellowship. You might love them in absence, that's fasting. You give sacrificially, that's generosity. So home is a great metaphor for a relationship. Because when you think about it, a home is something that we get to know. It's something that we get comfortable in. Whether you're in a college dorm room, your first apartment, you're renting a home, you, you bought a home, we all have a relationship with where we live. Uh, if you went to Home Depot or Target during the pandemic, like it was slammed, right? Because people were like, oh, you know, I'm going to do a home project or I'm going to do something in my, my house or I'm going to decorate something or there's, you know, it's like you can't be anywhere else, but there's a hundred people on aisle 17. Like all of a sudden people are descending upon these places that we're allowed to go. But we all, the point is we all want to make a home. We, we, we all want to make a place that feels special to us, that feels inviting to us, where we feel comfortable. When I was a kid, I remember when I finally got my own room at one point, my brother and I shared a room till like high school. And when I, when I got my own room, it was like a big deal. And I had a friend who was a, a graffiti artist spray paint my name that covered a whole wall. <laughs> and it was just the three letter version of my name. It just said Sam and it just like huge, just covered the whole wall. And when I walked in, that was my room. But it, 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 we want to personalize, right? We want places to feel special. We do this because we want to be comfortable. We want a sanctuary. We want a place that, that gives us peace or maybe even makes us feel inspired. And so we care about our living spaces. It's like we have a relationship with them. So it's not that hard when you think about it to imagine a relationship could also be a home, especially when that relationship is with God. He wants us to get comfortable enough to trust him. Uh, have you ever tried to help someone? Maybe you saw that they need help or you felt like you had something to offer, or whether it's wisdom or 
or, or support or generosity, what they needed, but, but it's like they wouldn't let you. Like there was just like a, a barrier between you being able to help them even though you, you knew you could help them. Almost every single time this happens, it's because there's a lack of trust. Trust has to be built. And so God, he wants to help us so much. He can help every single one of us in ways that no one else can. But the pathway to that is trust. And, the, and, and when we lack trust in our relationship with God, it sometimes limits what he's able to do in our lives. You know, there's a lot of ways that, that Christians try to gauge things like spiritual maturity or assessing our, our relationship with God, how strong it is. But at the end of the day, what always says the most is, do I trust him? Do I trust God? How, how comfortable do I feel with Jesus? How comfortable do I feel in my father's house? How quickly do I turn to him when I'm struggling? You know, if you think about it, when, when your home is a place that you associate with safety and peace and comfort, what do you do when you're stressed or when you're struggling? The first place you want to go is home. I saw a meme on social media the other day. It was like one of those like therapist accounts, but it said, I I'm speeding home like I'm late for work. <laughs> How many of you can relate though? Have you ever been in uncomfortable or or had a bad day, like the first place you want, you just want to get home. You just want to get to your, to your safe place. When Jesus is your home, his presence is where you want to be. And so how do we do this? Well, well, this week, I want to encourage you, spend some time. Think about this. Don't let it stop here. Think about, meditate, pray about what kind of home you're making with Jesus. What could you do that would allow your soul to flourish what could you do that would strengthen your relationship with God? What, what would make you feel more at home with God? My wife, Marcy, is really gifted with design. She's good at like designing spaces like offices or, or rooms. And the thing is, when she's helping someone out with design, an important thing to understand is what the other person wants. Like what are they looking for? What are they after? What makes them feel the way they want to feel. It's not a one size fits all. It's not your design works for everyone. And that's how a relationship with God is. That's how being at home with God is. If God came to you, imagine if he came to you and he said, we need you to decorate these rooms. What would you choose? What would, you look, what would it look like? What would you decide? What would you put in the room? What kinds of things do you do with God that reflect the kind of unique person that he created you to be? How do you get comfortable with God? There, there are core things that, that Scripture teaches us that are, that are the main pathways, right? Like prayer, reading Scripture, getting to know truth and getting to know the truth about God. And you can never replace those things, you know, worshiping God or, or fasting. But how do you take those things and develop pathways that personalize it? That make, that make you feel at home with God. For example, I used to go on prayer drives. I liked to drive around and pray. But now I have kids and it's a prayer walk because I got a stroller and it's like, it's a different season, right? One thing I used to do and used to feel connected with God doing a lot of, I no longer do because I'm in a different season. Maybe you can think of times when you used to do one thing and now you do another. Um, or some people make art. Some people put on worship music. Maybe there's a place in your physical home where you like to sit and pray or read scripture. Maybe you like to do certain things while you're doing this. Like maybe you feel close to God while you're cooking or while you're organizing your house. Every activity we do is an opportunity to involve God. But we're all uniquely wired for connection in different ways. And so the key really isn't exactly what you do. It's that this is your consistent pathway of connecting, of connecting with God, having a well-worn pathway where you get into a rhythm of meeting with God in his home. Lastly, verse six and seven, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well, and from now on, you do know him and have seen him. Number three, if you want to find your way home. Number three, get to know the Father through the Son. Get to know the Father 
through the Son. Through Jesus and only Jesus, we get to know God. Uh, When I was growing up, uh, my dad was a pastor my whole life. And when I was growing up in the town where they planted a church just outside of Sacramento, it was a small town, but there were about a thousand people that called that church home and the town only had like 10,000 people. Okay, so it was like there were more cows than people and everywhere you went, you saw someone from church because the odds were really good. And a lot of times people would, would know, like recognize me from church or know my relationship to my dad, right? And so if they wanted to get connected with him, they'd be like, hey, can you tell your dad this? Or hey, can you do this? Or maybe, you know, they, they had a motive or something. And so sometimes for me, that was annoying. Sometimes it was frustrating, right? Sometimes it put me on guard a little bit. But with the son of God, here's what you understand. With the son of God, all he wants to do is connect you to his father, His whole life is about connecting you with his father. The heart of the good news from the gospel of John is that through Jesus, we can know God in a way that had never before been possible. And you know who helps us understand that? Here's Thomas, because he's got questions. He's like, how are we gonna know the way? I don't know the way. Have you ever ever had a friend that always asks the questions and maybe they're the questions everybody else is thinking, but it just helps everybody learn. It just helps everybody Uh, understand. That's how Thomas is. He's trying to understand. He's asking questions, which by the way, that's what our brave groups are all about. Bring your questions. If you think of something, you're like, man, I want to know what more does that mean? Or what more could that look like? Write it down. Write it down in your notes. Bring your questions. So Thomas, he says he doesn't know where the father is. So how's he going to know how to get to him? And Jesus says, well, I can show you. I am the way that you get to the father. And so as you get to know me, you'll get to know him. And when you follow Jesus, you get all of who God is. This is how you find your way home. You know, in the Bible, the word home is used to reference different things. It's used to reference a a literal physical dwelling place, family households, geographical locations, like, like a hometown, we might say, right? Or social connections, relationships with other people. But when you hear these words, they often don't express the emotion that we connect to the English word home. Home is also an emotional state of being. Walls represent safety. Windows represent welcome. And so if there's intimacy and a a sense of belonging, a home can be made almost anywhere. Home represents humanity's most instinctive ache and our oldest desire. And God's presence can give us a home in any place at any time. God is the God of people without a home. He is the God of displaced travelers. He's the God of Abraham who left his country and his father's house to the land that God would show him. He's the God of Israel who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. He is the God of the Jews who were taken away from their homes, taken captive to Egypt, Assyria, and Babylon. And he is the God of Jesus Christ, who in his most displaced moments, who did he cry out to? He cried out to his father. He cried out to him for comfort. He cried out to him for wisdom. He cried out to him for his presence. And this father, this God, is always on the move. He never leaves us. He's always with us. His dominion, his presence covers every single person, every single place, every single thing, and he is our father. And so wherever we go, if you know the son and if you follow the way, his goodness and his mercy will follow you all the days of your life. And so when Jesus is within us, he will never leave us or forsake us. And you know what that means? That means that you can always be at home that you always have a home to go to. Your physical home is not your most important home. It's not even your strongest home. The home that is God's presence in your life is the only home that can't be burnt down, that can't be robbed, that can't be foreclosed, that cannot be taken from you. The home that is God's presence is a place that you can go no matter how chaotic, no matter how unsafe, no matter how stressful, No matter how difficult your earthly home may become, if you follow Jesus, you can always go to your father's house. 
So my question for you today is, do you feel at home? How at home do you feel? When, when you're stressed, when life gets hard, where do you go? On Friday, we had a funeral for my grandpa, Bill, and he's my dad's father. He passed away a little over a week ago, and I had the privilege of sharing just some reflections on his life. And I'm not going to share all of them, but I want to share a little bit because, you know, when I think about his life and the way that he lived, uh, he, he was constantly challenged to feel at home. So let me tell you a little bit about Bill Laws. He was, he was born into poverty. His worldview was shaped by the Great Depression. His first great loss in life was losing his firstborn, a baby girl, at 10 months old. Imagine that. His second great loss, not long after, was when his body was crippled by arthritis. And because he wasn't healed, his faith community abandoned him. They betrayed him. He lost his church. He lost his vocation as a carpenter. He was told by doctors he would never walk again. And he had 21 surgeries. He lost his ability to defend, protect, and provide for his family. In some seasons, it was a loss of identity. And through it all, he was faithful because he found his home in his father's house. He graduated from Fresno State University. He got a master's degree in vocational rehabilitation counseling because he wanted to help others that were in a, a place like him. He wanted to help them find a way forward. Uh, he started a men's group, called it the second cup of coffee. So it's pretty good at naming things. But he didn't do it just to create a community, just to create a club, just a place for people to hang out. He did it because he was an evangelist and he wanted other people to find their way home. Sometimes we all feel lost. We all feel far from home. We feel stuck. Maybe we even feel like God's not blessing our lives. Like, what's up with this, God? What's going on? Why, why does my life feel harder than it should feel? Maybe you've got some pain in your life that almost feels like an injustice. You know, the thing about the hard stuff of life is every one of us has hard parts of life. And so really the true measure of a person is their ability to stay faithful when life gets hard. When you feel like life is unfair, when you feel like you got the short end of the deal, or when you feel like God isn't blessing you or helping you and your burden is too heavy. And when you feel this, really what it is, is it's like a red flag saying, hey, don't forget to go home. Don't forget where your home is. Home is not a physical location. Home is being in your father's house. And we need to remember how safe and secure and strong his house is. In his house, you don't need to worry. You don't need to be afraid. You don't need to be anxious. You don't need to strive. You don't need to be discouraged. You don't need to lose hope. You do not need to be lost. And so if you, if you feel lost right now, let, let me ask you something. What if God wants you to experience the, a feeling of home like you've never felt before? What if that's possible? Are you open to it? Would you receive it? You know, I, like I said earlier, trust, right? God can only give us as much as we're willing to trust him. And so I believe that there, there is something that God wants to give, give us today. And that is a feeling of his presence, a feeling of home. And it's not meant to stay here, but it's meant to bless us. I'm gonna ask you to stand and in a few moments, we're gonna sing a song and we're gonna, we're gonna worship and we're gonna ask God to bring us home, to give us a, a feeling of, of safety, of security, of warmth, of, and all of this through surrender. God, we need you. We need the home that, that only you can provide. God, in this moment as we worship you, as we run to you, bring us home. Give us, give us a, a taste of your presence. Give us a taste 
of your, of your peace. Give us a taste of what only your spirit can do in our lives, God, and, and, and let us leave with it. God, we love you. We praise you. We run to you. In Jesus' name, amen.